In this video, we will perform submodeling using Hypermesh and OptiStruct. This type of analysis is also known as global local analysis in which results extracted from a large global model are mapped onto a smaller part of the same model called the submodel. We will perform submodeling on a simple assembly which consists of a bracket connected to an I-beam. The stress and displacement results for the bracket will be extracted from the large global model. Let's get right into it. To get a copy of the FEM file used in this video, please contact me via email. My email address is provided in the about section of this channel. The first step is to create a material and property for all the components in the model. Let's take a look at how this is done. Once the FEM file is imported in Hypermesh, Three components are visible in the model browser, the bracket, beam and weld. Let's start by creating a new material. Provide a name to it. We will enter the default mechanical properties of steel. Now create a new property. Enter a name for this property. With card image as P shell, Select the steel material in material selection box. We will enter thickness value as 8 mm. For the second component, create another P shell property. We will assign the steel material to this property. Let's enter thickness value as 10 mm. Lastly, create one more P shell property for the third component. We will again use the same material. Now enter thickness value as 6 mm. The materials and properties have now been created. We will assign the properties to respective components. For the bracket component, select the 8 mm thickness property. For the beam component, we will use the 10 mm thickness property. Lastly, assign the 6 mm thickness property to the weld component. Create a new component to store RBE3 elements. We will use the RBE3 tool from model ribbon to create rigid spiders at required locations in the model. Switch the independent selector to edges. Now select this circular edge. Make sure that all degrees of freedom for independent and dependent nodes have been selected. Create the RBE3 element. Similarly, we will create another RBE3 element at the second hole location. Now we will define the loads and boundary conditions for the large global analysis. The bracket will be fixed at the mounting hole locations and a downward force will be applied on the I-beam. Let's start by creating single point constraints at required locations in the model. Create a new load collector to store single point constraints. Open the BCs tool from Analyze ribbon. We will select the constraints sub-option. Now select the center nodes of the RBE3 elements. With all 6 degrees of freedom checked, create the constraints. Exit the constraints panel and click on BCs again to close the tool. Create another load collector for force. Now we will use the force tool from analyze ribbon. Orient the model using the view cube. We will drag a box and select all the nodes on this edge of the beam component. From the drop-down, select Nodally Distributed option. Let's apply a force of magnitude 1000 Newton along negative Y direction. Create the force loads. Exit the force panel. And now we can start with the most crucial step of this analysis. We will create a sub-model which consists of the bracket component and remesh it with a finer element size. 
Then we will create two separate load steps, one for the global analysis and one for the sub model. Create a new component to store the fine mesh for the bracket component. Let's hide all the other components in the model. We will also hide all the load collectors. Now switch the entity selector to elements and select all elements from the bracket component using the advanced selection list. Right click anywhere on the screen and duplicate the selected elements in current component. Now we will use the split tool from elements ribbon to convert this coarse mesh into a fine mesh. Select all the elements and split them along all sides. Unhide the original bracket component. Press shift F3 to open the edges panel. Let's switch the entity selector to elements and select all the elements visible on the screen. Preview equivalence and equivalence. Now assign the 8mm thickness property to this fine meshed bracket component. The coarse meshed global model and the fine meshed sub model are now ready. Let's create a set to specify the global model. We will select all the elements from the bracket, beam, weld and RB3 components. Create another set to define the sub model. Now select all the elements from the fine meshed bracket component. To couple the loads and boundary conditions in a linear static analysis, create a new load step. We will call this the global run. Change the analysis type to linear static. In the SPC field, select the SPC load collector. In the load field, select the force load collector. Now scroll down and select the sub model option. As this is the global run, select the global element set. Set the SIDR field to all to include all rigid elements. The global run is now defined. Create another load step for the local run. Change the analysis type to linear static. Select the sub model option again. This time we will select the local element set to define this as the local run. Set the SIDR to all. To link this local run to the results obtained from the global run created during the previous step, enable the globe sub option. Select the global load step as input. Right click and create edit the transfer nodes set. This set will specify the locations at which displacements will be mapped from the global results to the local sub model. Hide all components except the original coarse meshed bracket component. Press down Alt key on the keyboard and select all the edges by path. We will also select all the nodes on these circular edges. Once all the required nodes are selected, create the set. The global model and its corresponding local sub model have now been properly defined. The Optistruct solver deck is now ready for run. Let's export the solver deck in FEM format. Create a new folder to save this file. Make sure to use underscore in place of space while entering all file names to avoid any issues during the solver run. Set export option to all and complete the export. 
we will copy the location of the file using file explorer. Now open the compute console application. Set the solver to OptiStruct. In the input file selection box, we will select the FEM file exported from Hypermesh. Click on Run to launch the OptiStruct solver. This may take some time to solve. Once the run is complete, close the solver window and compute console. Let's create a new page in the same Hyperworks session. The client will be automatically switched to Hyperview. Split the graphics window into two parts to view the global and submodel results simultaneously. Now select the open file option. We will select the H3D results file from the working directory. Apply the same results in both the windows. Let's synchronize the two windows. To view the mesh lines, select all the components in the result browser and use the visualization setting to enable mesh view. Do the same for the second window. This will help to better visualize the difference between the global and submodel results. In the first window, use the contour panel to apply the displacement results. Let's view the stress results. With averaging method as simple, apply the stress results. As we are interested in the bracket component, let's apply the results only to this component. We can see that the stress contours are not well defined due to the coarse mesh used for the global run. In the second window, switch to the second load case that is the local submodel run. The other components are automatically masked. Apply the displacement results. Now apply the stress results. As you can see, the stress contours and stress concentration areas are visible much more distinctly in the local submodel. This is due to the finer size of mesh. We have successfully performed submodeling in OptiStruct and extracted results from a coarse meshed global model to a fine meshed local submodel. And this is how we can perform submodeling using Hypermesh and OptiStruct. If you like this video, Please hit the red subscribe button and give a thumbs up, it helps a lot. Make sure to follow me on social media to stay updated about latest video content. Thanks for watching.